This video is going to show you how to use the Lego programming software to create what we call a my block, which is a way of taking a, a series of blocks, like you might have three or four different blocks connected together, and then turn that series of blocks into just a single block that does exactly the same thing. It's a really good way of compressing a program, making it smaller, once you get beyond a certain limit, because once you have a, start to have a big complicated program, it starts looking very, very messy, which takes up lots of space on the screen, is hard to follow, hard to read. So it's a way of making this program smaller and neater looking. It's also a way of, if you've got instructions that you're using again and again and again, it's a way of, it's a way of making them so that they can be reused easily. Anyway, probably the best way of doing this is just look, have a, look at a quick example to give you an idea of how this stuff works. So we're going to start off with something very simple. We're going to make a my block that says, hello, good morning and then flashes the lights on the keypad red. So we're going to do that by stringing together the words hello, good, and morning, which are all sound files uh, built into Lego, and then we'll have a block after that that flashes the lights red. So we'll do that quickly. So from the bottom of the screen with the green action tab, I'm going to grab three sound blocks, and then a button light block, and I'll just do my settings from there. Okay, so the first one, go up to here, I choose Lego sound files, then communication, and under communication, I want it to say, hello. Hello. The next one, again, I'm working in the communication folder, and this time I want, good. good. And the last guy, communication folder again, and morning. morning. And the last block, I want the lights to flash red at the moment, they're yellow, so I just click there and choose red. Okay, ready to go. So you'll notice I haven't connected these to the green start block like we normally do. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm not planning on actually running this as a program, I just want to turn it into one of these my blocks. And if you try and create a my block like we're going to do in a second, with the green start block attached, you'll get an error message, it won't work. So we need to leave these blocks out there by themselves and not connect it up to the start block. Alright, so click and drag to draw a box around them so they're highlighted blue. Then go up to the Tools menu and choose My Block Builder. Okay, this is our setup screen for our My Block. So here, before you can do anything else, you need to enter in a name and, if you want, a description. Now, I'm not going to enter the description this time. But if you had a complicated program that had multiple my blocks in it, you might want to add a description to just remind yourself of what each one actually does. Or if you're planning on sharing these blocks with other people, then a the description would be handy as well. I'm just going to put a name in. I'm going to call it greeting. And then I can also, at least for this simple example, I can also change the icon up the top there. So you can see at the moment it's got a head with a bunch of cogs in it. But I can click on any one of these to change the icons. I might make a little speaker one. Now that I'm happy with that, I press finish, and you'll see that my single block, uh, sorry, my three or four blocks has been replaced with a single block called greeting. So I could now click that up to the green start arrow, and if I then was to run that program on my EV3, it would say, hello, good morning, and then flash the lights red. Okay, so if you want to then access your my block again, so let's say you wanted to use it multiple times, if you go down to the bottom of the screen, the blue-green tab down the bottom is where any my blocks you've created within that program exist. So if I click there at the moment, there's my greeting block, so I can drag another copy up there and click it onto the existing one. All right, all good. Um, so you'll see how it's made the program a lot shorter and neater. Um, but, and also a good reason for using this is it's modular, which means you can take a whole bunch of instructions, which are normally quite big, and move them around easily because it's just a single block by itself. Now, what you might want to do if you're working on a project with um, other people is be able to share these my blocks. So you've made a my block to do one part of your particularly complicated program, like maybe a, a RoboCup challenge and you want to be able to send that to your mate who's working on the other part. So we need a way of exporting or sharing 
my blocks, and that's pretty easy. At the top left hand corner here, there's a little spanner icon that's called Project Properties. So if you click on that, you get this screen, and under this screen, we are interested in the tab that says My Blocks. And then we click on this guy, greeting.ev3p. That's the block you just made. And then go down the bottom and hit export. Save as, uh, just call it like greeting block. And I'm going to send that to my desktop. Press save. And where are we? There we go. So that's how it's exported it. Now, on the other end, so let's just get rid of this completely. Start up a new program. So now I'm imagining that I'm a, another person. This is the person I'm sent my block to. So if I go up to project properties here, go to my blocks again, go import. If I now find my greeting block that I saved to the desktop, which greeting block.ev3s. Double click on that and you'll see that it's now imported that into my program. So if I go back to the program itself, click under the blue green my block tab and there it is. So that's an easy way that you can create these my blocks and then export them so you can send it to another person over email or something like that, social media, whatever, and then they can take that um, my block and import it into their own program. So it allows you to work as a team on a complicated project like a RoboCup challenge. All right, so that's enough for this video. The next one we'll have a look at a slightly more advanced example. So we'll look at um, adding parameters. So at the moment, it's just a block that just does a single function and has no input from you. But maybe you want to change things about it. Maybe you want to change how long the, um, the keypad light flashes for or what color it flashes. So we'll look at that next time. How do you add input parameters? But for now, I'm out.